Hello, everybody. Um, as we promise, we're going to speak about what's coming this Thursday night and uh, Friday morning. Um, I will try to be as simple as I can to make sure that this kind of information will inspire you and will help us to understand that there is window of opportunity. And when I say window of opportunity, because we live in a physical, materialistic universe, and as we live in the physical universe, we need to tap into the spiritual universe. So from the physical place here on this planet, we need to know what type of opening there is, when is it happening, what do I need to do to change, to transform so I can connect to that opportunity, for how long the window will be open, and when is this window will be closed. So the entire concept what, for whatever we call it, holidays, that the reason I'm careful not to use that word enough, but I don't have another word to explain to you what I'm about to explain, it is called holidays. Some places even call it Jewish holiday. But it's not about religion. It is about opportunity, availability, that the endless, the light, the energy is flowing, but if you don't know when and how to open that window, you're just going to miss it. It's almost like missing a train. So it's only between Thursday night till Friday night, and the most important time is from Thursday night till Friday morning. And if you miss that few hours, that let's say we start, let's say at, I don't know, 8, and we end up at uh, 6 a.m., less than 12 hours, that's the whole opening. So the amount of time of that amazing opportunity doesn't last very long. Where is it? Everywhere. Doesn't matter where you live, that opportunity is available. All what you gotta do is first to be aware. Then, of course, we have to go through meditation and pray. And the one difficult behavior change that we need to apply in that night is not to sleep. And that's difficult for some people. Not to sleep. I always tell people. Remember when you were being invited to a party and you didn't want to sleep because the party was so great? You still at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. It's different when you've been invited to a spiritual opportunity because now you don't have enough energy to stay awake. Why is that? Because when you're about to act spiritual, your Energy is basically not always have an affinity with the energy of the universe. Why is that? Because if all year long I'm acting from a physical consciousness, from a body awareness, when I want to tap into non-body awareness, non-physical awareness, I'm not trained well. Try to imagine somebody going to the Olympic after one year is eating or she's eating potato chips watching Netflix. I think the statistic and probability show that they're not going to get the gold medal. Same thing 
is for spirituality. There is an opportunity. And I don't want you to miss it. Because that opportunity, it happened only once a year, and it lasts for less than 12 hours. It's gone, it's gone. So please, wherever you are, however you are, whatever you're in a bad mood or good mood, whatever you are in love or you're fighting with your spouse, you need to be there. Because that energy will last for one year. That's, I think, it's a good deal. All right, let's start. What is exactly spiritually happening? If you remember, about one and a half months ago, I gave a lecture here about Passover. And I say that in the night of Passover, we receive freedom. Freedom from death. Freedom from problem. Freedom from all the things that bother us. And then I said, that force, that energy, will be disappear the day after. Once that energy is disappear, it's available and accessible exactly 50 days later. That 50 days later happened exactly on Thursday night. So the energy that we capture 50 days before wasn't belong to us. It's called in Kabbalah, Itaruta de la Tata. I'm sorry, Itaruta de la Ela. Mean awakening, I'm translating it into English, awakening from below, meaning a gift that was given to us from above. Awakening from above, I'm sorry. Itaruta de la Ela. Awakening from above. Energy that flowing to us as a gift. I'm giving you to test from the chef hand directly to you what will be the dinner 50 days from now. You ever see a groom and a bride preparing the wedding? 50 days before the wedding, they meet with the chef, they meet food, and they have the food tasting. I don't know if you ever did it. Amazing. Amazing. Ah, unbelievable. I was one of those people who go and test people's food before the wedding. And some people chose me to choose the food for everybody. Great job because I love to eat. The problem is you eat just a little bit, just portion of what it's going to be 50 days later. That's Passover. So yes, Passover feeling great. We are dancing, we are happy, we are connecting to the most awesome energy. But the next morning, that awesome energy is gone. Shavuot, Thursday night, that energy can be yours if you do what you need to be doing. First, can't sleep. What happened if you need to work on the next day? Some people need to make a living. Well, what can I tell you? You know, I heard one of the greatest uh, a spiritual leader, Deepak Chopra, say something to Gay, very, very nice. He said, if you're always busy, if you always say you're busy and you don't have time, that's when you're not really busy. People always tell you, I'm so busy. I'm so busy, I hardly have any time. That's when they don't do something right with their life. There's no such a thing that you're busy. Ah, Friday. You find a way to take the day off. Work on Sunday. Tell the company that I want to work on Sunday. Work on Sunday. Work on Saturday night. From Sunday night, work till Sunday night. It's okay. You got to find a way that you're going to capture this energy that it's giving you a gift that you can earn what you couldn't earn on the night of Passover. Remember, the night of Passover was Itaruta de Leela, awakening from above, meaning the gift was presented to you. The night of Thursday night, Shavuot, is Itaruta de la Tata, meaning awakening from below. That's been what's come from a human being point of view. And now I am earning it, and now that energy is mine. Now, what is the energy exactly? 
What am I getting? Let's put it this way, and I'm trying to use a layman language that everybody can capture it and understand it. On the time of Passover, I'm always going to go back to Passover to explain to you, we were free out of Egypt. But free out of Egypt doesn't happen every year. It's a historical event. For that reason, the Kabbalah is telling us every Passover, you can free yourself from all what bother you. But it will disappear the next day. That ability to achieve freedom, success, uh, independency, all the great thing you wish for yourself is available now by staying awake all night to capture that energy that make you free from chaos and connect to goodness. And we tap into something that call in Kabbalah Keter, crown. What is crown? It's a level that you achieve a place that is free from limitation. No limitation. No end. Every time we tap into something, we connect to an end. Everything ends. Everything ends. Unfortunately, life ends. Relationship end, good things end, also bad things end. But there is an end to think. On Shavuot, on Thursday night, there is an opportunity to connect to the crown of the Erampin, meaning I'm tapping into a level where there is no end. That's a great opportunity. What do I need to do? Let me sign in right now. I want to sign in to no end. If you count the amount of book in the Bible, there are 24. I'm not going to go again to details because this lecture should be about 18 hours to make it right. And I have to do in one hour a little bit concentration of what it's all about. 24 books, each one of them has a crown of itself. Rabbi Isaac Luria is teaching us when you read the beginning of each book and the end of each book, you tap it into the crown energy of each book and those crowns helping you that this year you will have a great year. And I don't need to tell you how much we need it. I think we all agree we need it. We need to be healthy. The universe needs to be healthy. Not just physical health, mental health. Mental health being that people will put all the guns down. That people will help this universe not to melt on us. That people will, all of us, will help each other to be kind when we're not in the mood to be kind. I know I need it. I need to learn to be more kind. I need to learn to be more merciful. I need to let the anger go. I need to let the impatience go. To do it is not an easy thing. The transformation is difficult. Once I'm reading those 24 sections at night, night, not in the daytime, we, we decide we're going to do it at 10 p.m. When you do it at 10 p.m. at night, you tap it into those ktarim, those crowns. And when you tap into those crowns, you are now connecting to a force that will take care of you for the rest of the year. When you stay awake all night and you meditate and pray in the morning, why do you need to stay awake? Why can't you sleep? Think about it. Sleeping and death are quite similar. What is the difference between somebody who dies and somebody who is going to sleep? The one who's going to sleep is going to wake up the next morning. The one who die, not wake up the next morning. When you stay awake at that specific night, because it's a window of opportunity, you tap into a light of energy, injection of energy, that you're going to wake up every morning 
And there is different opinion for how long is this insurance work. Some companies said three and a half months. Other companies said from now till the next Passover. Other companies said for one year, 365 days. I don't know what you're thinking now, if it's a good deal or not a good deal. Even if it's three and a half months, it's a good deal, I think. I don't know what you're thinking. So you're getting an opportunity to wake up every morning for the three and a half months. But you study, read the 24 books, <coughs> of course, just the beginning and the end of each book, and then stay awake. I don't think it's a lot of effort to put 12 hours of effort so you can get this deal done. And if you think it's a big effort, then you think it's small. And yes, if you feel I'm judging you, I am. You are thinking small. Let me make sure I say it again. You're thinking small. If you look at this video, look at my eyes. You are thinking small. People who think small are not belong with the winner. Let me say it again. You don't belong in the winner. You should not even try to stay awake. There is a group of people who want to make it this year. If you belong with them, you make an effort. Sometimes I'm watching ESPN and I'm watching this team that went to the Olympic to win the basketball. I'm sure you saw it too. They make an effort. You're going to make an effort to make it right to make sure that you wake up every morning in the next three months, one year, six months, something. It's worth it. Please, take it seriously this year. So, so far I explained to you what happened in that night, how long it lasts, what is that you need to do, and I'm about to go a little bit deeper to understand exactly what happened in that night. And to make you sure you understand, after you do the work at night, when you start the praying and meditation in the morning, that energy brings the crown from the Eranpin, from the male energy, into Malchut, into the female energy. The female energy is taking care of your health, your money, your well-being, everything that you need for the physical point of view is being taken care of in the morning. Everything that you need for the soul point of view is taken care of at night. You tell me if that's not the most powerful gift a human being can achieve for their life. And I just hope it will be millions of people doing it on this Thursday night. And what does it take? Just to go with your phone and just share. It's a crime. It is a crime not to share this information I share with you. It's a crime. It's almost like you are a criminal. If you just heard what I say and you didn't share it immediately to 100 or 200 or thousands of people immediately, not to wait. Thousands of people has to hear from you. If you have 10 people, it's a crime. Yes, feel the pressure. Yes, make sure you're uncomfortable. Make sure when you listen to this lecture, you're standing. You're not sitting, you're not lying down. Stand. Stand because it's a requirement of saving this universe depends on this evening. Whatever this evening work or doesn't work, it is on your shoulders. If you don't feel the pressure, then you're not belong in the group of the winner. If you feel the pressure to win the Olympic, or to win your business, or to win your relationship, or to win your health issue, then you're ready. Feel the pressure. Feel the pressure to make it different. Now, remember, motivation comes in two categories. Lacking something and getting something. If you are only into the getting something, you think it's more. If you into the lacking and getting, meaning I didn't know I could get this, 
Remember when you get your first smartphone and you start to realize what this phone can do? A minute before you didn't, a minute after you do. Your friend told you. So when your friend tell you about all the things you're lacking, and now your friend is teaching you all the things you can get from this phone, how excited you are. So get to these two consciousness, night and day. That's why we do it. In the nighttime, there is a connection. And in daytime, there's a pray and meditation. What is the meditation and, and pray at night? To read those 24 books. What is the meditation and pray in the morning? Is to connect and pray for about one hour, a little bit more. And then when you get these two energy, night represents the concept of lacking. I don't have something. Day represents the concept of fulfillment. In 12 hours, you can capture all of it. Don't let it slip through your fingers. It really doesn't take a lot. Don't let it slip through your fingers. All right, now. It's written, I'm about to explain to you what is happening in the end of time. When I say the end of time, meaning when it will be no longer chaos, when it will be no more death, when it will be no more loss of somebody, there will be no more loss of money. How does that look like? And what is the purpose of this life? As you all know, we were born with good and bad in everything. The good and bad are mixed with one another. Our job is to sift the good from the bad and the bad from the good. In everything in this life, as good and bad. That's why the fruit has the part that you eat and the part that usually you put into the garbage. If those of you who say skin is very healthy for you, you should always eat the fruit with the skin. I'm sure there is some people who think about it, right? Then you have to take some wisdom out of my father. My father said, if the skin is so perfect, why don't you eat the cactus fruit with the skin? I don't know if you know what the cactus fruit looks like. There's a thorn in it, very dangerous, to put it on your tongue. So, what I'm trying to say, the skin of a fruit represents the part which is the negativity. The internal part is the positivity. So for example, orange peel is the skin, it's the clipa. The fruit is the light. Banana, outside, skin, clipa, negativity. Inside, fruit. Everything in this life has two aspects, everything. The external and the internal. Or if you want, the skin or the fruit. The skin called the clipot, the negativity. The fruit is the positivity. I'm not going into details. The physical example I'm using is just example of helping you to understand that our universe operates in two levels, good and bad. After Adam and Eve sin, everything is mixed good and bad. We have good and bad in us. Nobody is perfectly good and nobody is totally bad. We are mixed. Of both. So everything in our universe is good and bad, and that's all we need to do sifting, separation between the good and the bad. The life that we have, we've been built with a desire. This desire can be used to draw everything into my life from a selfish point of view, or I can use the desire. I want something because I know how much the universe want to share with me. In, in the end of time, when it will be no more chaos, we will be able to desire everything just for the sake of sharing. Meaning, I want everything because I know how much sharing this universe want to share with me. So when we are talking about the end of the tikkun, when we are talking the end of chaos, the end of evil, the end of all negativity, meaning that in the end of time, 
we will get to a place that we can receive only for the sake of sharing. Meaning that I will want something from the universe because I will connect to the concept of sharing that the universe wants to do with me. That concept called Tikkun Olam, meaning the end of the Tikkun or the end of the correction. This universe was created more than 5,000 years ago. I know some people say millions, but human being, you like it or not, take it or leave it, was created nothing more than more than about 5,780 years ago. Adam and Eve creation. Whatever happened before, of course it was other creation. But the human being as we know it, created 5,780 years ago. Adam and Eve. The creation of Adam and Eve. And the way we've been created, we have within us a desire to receive that can either lead us to a place where it's killing us or it will make us survive. If we use that desire to make us more selfish, it's going to kill us. If we don't de use the desire at all, it will kill us. If we use that desire because we know that there is a force who want to share with us, that will change everything. And to get to that place, we either have to wait until we get to the year 6,000 or we as a group of winners will change our selfish agenda, not from a manner's point of view, change it because I know how much the light and the universe want to share with me, so now I desire everything because the universe want to give it to me. To get to that point, we have to go to a transition. The transition has to be, not because I feel like I want to buy food for people, because that involves ego, it's because I'm using the concept of spirituality called Torah and Mitzvot. I'm using the precept of using spirituality as a tool to refine my ability or what we call my vessel, my desire. I'm using that tools to refine my desire so it's no longer will be wanting to receive for me only that that desire will want to receive because the universe want to share with me. And we need to use the concept called Torah and Mitzvot, Masim Tovim, and good doing. We still have to do good doing. Still you have to buy dinner for somebody. But again, it has to come not from a point of I'm buying you dinner, it has to come from a place that by me buying dinner to you, I'm refining my desire to receive. It will not be only for me. It will be a desire to receive, to receive all the light from the Creator. That will happen either in the end of the 6,000, we are now 5,780, or it can happen tomorrow. We can finish it. What is that as to do with Shavuot? What is that has to do with Thursday night? The energy of Gemara Tikkun, the energy of the end of the Tikkun, that's supposed to be in the year 6000, which we are 220 years from now, happen every time, every window in time that called Shavuot. By the way, Shavuot means weeks, because there is weeks between Passover and that holiday. That's why it's called weeks. It has many names to this holiday. Chag Bikurim, Chag Atzeret. Okay? So, the holidays has many names. But if you don't have the full understanding of what you're getting, the name will not help you to get it. So what's revealed on Thursday night? An opportunity to fix my desire. It will no longer receive for oneself alone, that it will receive because the Creator wants to give.
And what happened by then? Think about it. How is the desire to receive for only for myself look like? It looked like pain, suffering, selfishness, me, 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 and myself. Look what have we done to our planet. Our blue planet, what we call it, right? It's scary. We need a virus. Only a virus that can stop us from injecting poison into our food, into our ocean. We need a virus to allow the dolphins to come back to Venice in Italy. We need a virus to make the ocean a little bit cleaner. We need a virus to make us a little bit kind to one another. We need a virus to be more forgiving. We need a virus to make us appreciate one another and our family member. We need a virus to put the people we care about closer to us in one house. We need a virus that will last long enough to appreciate one another and to be afraid that the people who love will not die. Look at that. What does that mean? And finally, the virus has a name. It's called Corona. Cor in Hebrew means freezing. Na means raw. The freezing, the heart that was freezing. Or the raw, naked energy that want to fly into my soul is being closed by a cold heart. Coincidentally, we call it Corona because it's crown. Talk about crown of Zeranpin, crown of Malchut that happening only on Thursday night. And some people come with, well, I might be tired. 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 What if I tell you in the street, they're giving every minute $10,000. Would you stay the whole night? Or you say, eh, two hours it's enough, 20,000 it's enough, 40,000. Or you going to say, wait a minute. You say every minute? Of course. Wouldn't you stay till 8 a.m.? You bring your whole espresso machine with you, say, I don't care, I'm staying awake. Think about it. What happened to us? And why we have to go to virus to wake up? What is the worst sin of a human being? It's true, because when you have desire to do bad, you are canceling your connection with what want to do good to you. But what does that mean? A crime, a sin, is when you think it is small. You want to know what a crime looks like? You think small. Why are you stealing? Why are you stealing money? Because you don't believe that you could receive more money without stealing. So you're stealing. But whatever you steal will always be half of the amount that you're capable of making. Why are you cheating? You have to ask yourself. Because you believe that your choice was not good enough because you don't think of yourself as good enough. Again, thinking small. Every crime you're going to do relate to thinking small. Remember that. Every crime. And if you get money instead of getting a self-esteem and personality, if that works for you, go ahead. Be my guest. Do your crime. In the crime category, there is two types. Crime you do by mistake and crime that you do purposely. The crime that you do by mistake, it's still a crime. Let's say it was a hundred dollar bill that belonged to somebody else and you took it because you thought it was yours. You didn't do it purposely. Is this still considered a crime? Yes, it is. It means the person who stole a lack of awareness and that's why he steals 
still, he didn't do it purposely, but it's still still. When the person steals that under dollar by mistake, is blocking himself from receiving something greater from the universe. And by that, in making his vessel, his container much smaller. And through that, he cannot receive his full potential capacity. When the purpose, when the person still, not by mistake, which means by intention, that means that you seal your awareness, your consciousness to a level that you truly believe that you have a small vessel container and that's why you have to steal fulfillment from somebody else's vessel because you believe you don't have the ability to achieve it. That's why you steal. That's called doing a crime with the full intention or doing a crime by mistake. Both of those categories of crime is blocking you from receiving what? The full capacity of what the light want to give you. Think about it. If the creator created this universe, is the purpose of creating this universe was to punish you or to fulfill you? If you truly believe that the purpose of this universe is to reward you and give you more and more every day, then you know the universe want to give you. The creator, the divine want to give you. When you go into pain, you commit a crime. First you have to go through pain, then you have to repair that pain, either in the right direction or either to crime. You have pain, you have no food to eat. You lost your job. You get fired. You get humiliated by getting fire, you run out of money, and you have no food, what do you do? You have choices now. You can go ahead and commit a crime, or you're going to find a way how you can earn back what you don't have. You have two ways. If you choose the crime way, it's a shorter, it's sweeter, it seems better, but then what happened to you? You actually seal yourself into a place that you truly believe you don't have the capability to fulfill yourself ever. If you go ahead and earn it, you absolutely build yourself with more pain, with more discomfort, but eventually you build yourself to become yourself. Those of you who are not patient, those of you who are not ready to wait, not ready to do the work, uh, you can turn off the, the video right now and go eat your ice cream. It's not for you. Seriously, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not joking with you guys. Those of you who really want to make a difference this year have to watch this video at least 20 times. Uh, when I say 20, that's at least. If you didn't watch it five times, you're not getting it. You're not grasping it. You got to watch it again. Not only before Shavuot, not only before Thursday night. It's a game changing. If you understand this lecture, you understand life. So now, what do you do if you already did those crimes? You took somebody else's wife, you took somebody else's husband, you stole money. You did all those crimes purposely and not purposely. Not by purpose. What do you do then? Then you do something called repentance. The repentance has two levels. When you repent, what is to repent? You want to transform the past into a clean slack. Did I, am I saying it correctly? Slate. Slate. Mm -hmm. Slate. Slit. Clean slit. You clean yourself. That's what repentance means. You clean yourself. But the cleaning has two levels. Either you clean yourself because you're afraid that you're losing an opportunity, or either you are the entire time of cleaning, you're excited. I'm not big on washing dishes. No. I don't think I'm the best in it. And I'm not any, have any life purpose to become a master of washing dishes. I don't know the reason why. Maybe because when I was young, I was working in that. I was washing dishes the size of my body. 
Maybe that's the reason. So I saw only soap and washing with the hand non-stop. I was doing whatever it take to make a living and to survive. Thank to my mom, thank to her education. That she teach me, nothing should make you ashamed to have a job. Anything is better than take other people's money. Thank God to my mom. So I work. So I'm not big on cleaning. Don't know how to clean. Don't know. I can cook for you. But it will be a messy kitchen after I leave. Ask my wife. She will tell you this. Am I right, Debbie? Yep. Did everybody wish Debbie happy birthday? Yeah. That's her Ibu birthday today. Did you know that? She born in the third Ibu month on the third day. Oh, wow. What an opportunity. What an opportunity. And you know what she did today on her own birthday? She took this piece of information and she go door to door. She doesn't want me to tell you. And tell people about this opportunity of Thursday night. This is what she does on her birthday. Go and share and help. And you know what the second thing she did today? She was helping me creating a curriculum for school. So kids all over the United States will have spiritual curriculum so they can grow better. That's Debbie. Not everybody can be Debbie. You know, some people want to be like Mike. I want to be like Debbie. <laughs> everybody has their own thing. And I also want to wish, if you hear me, Mike Lingla there, uh, happy birthday as well. You know, Michael, I know him since he was 16. You know, I met him when he was, <laughs> I can't describe how I met him. It's embarrassing him and me, but I met him when he was young. And, uh, Thank you, Michael. Thank you for being in my life. And uh, thank God and thank your mother and father who created you, you know. And may God give you more and more happy birthday to you and your family. You're one of the most incredible souls I met this lifetime. And thank you for inspiring me. Anyway, going to our point. The cleaning process has two levels. You do it with love or you do it because you're afraid. When you do it with love, when my wife, wife wash dishes, she do it with love. I don't get it. I suffer to look at her. I say, honey, why are you washing dishes? And she answered, I love it. So you love washing dishes? Please help me. What do you mean you love washing dishes? I don't get it. So I love washing it. I love it. This is my therapy, she tell me. And she's really singing and happy. There is people like me or my son, one of them, his name is Yehuda. Both of us are not big at washing dishes. So when we wash dishes, you're not going to see us singing. You're not going to see us smiling. We are like suffering. The face of suffering. The same category going into a spiritual repentance. You either do it with love, which is the highest level, or you do it from fear or from awe. When you want to change what you did wrong, from fear, whatever you did wrong purposely, and you clean it from fear, not with joy, you turn the negative thing that you did into a better category. When you doing it from love, all the negative thing you did, turning into positive thing. Unheard of, right? All the worst thing you ever did in your life, turning actually to the best thing you ever did. And of course, the question is, it seemed like unreal. That's what's supposed to happen in the end of the tikkun, in the end of time, in the 6,000 years. That's what's supposed to happen. It, I mean, that's what's going to happen, not supposed to, what's going to happen. Maybe before, much before, much, much before. On Shavuot, on Thursday night, the energy of the end of the Tikkun is equal to the holiday of Shavuot. It's available, accessible for all of us to come with our issues for the negativity. And if we're doing it with excitement, staying awake all night with excitement, study all night, doing the prayer in the morning with excitement, then all the negativity turn into positivity. <laughs> Guys, if you part of the dream team that winning the Olympic, the dream team of winning the negativity 
in spirituality, how can you let it go? How can you let it go? Every minute you're getting light. Now, I'm reading now from Agdaba of Sefer Azor to Shavuot. It say that our desire is good and bad because we mix, like I said in the beginning. So in our universe, everything is good and bad. Meaning, when you feel bad, that's considered like a punishment. When you feel good, that feels like rewarding. So you have punishment and reward in life. Why you have punishment and reward? Because when you connect to our physical universe, to the Balchut, where we are, this physical universe before the end of the Tikkun, then everything about this universe is good and bad. Part of the good and bad is punishment and reward. But when we are anu rotzim livlo akol tov alom levdenu anotenu rechvodenu, farchen pel lemashen anorim mod kabalat avos lama. When a person just want to swallow all the greatness that the universe want to give you, just for like people destroying this blue planet, me, 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 and myself, more tuna fish, more this fish, more that. Let's kill as much as fish as we can. Let's kill as much as cow as we can. Let's kill more animal to eat them. Let's kill more trees so we can have more furniture. When we are swallowing this universe in a selfish way, and pele, say Rav Ashlag, no wonder we cannot receive all the goodness that the Creator want to give you. Why? If He want to give us everything, we want to receive everything, seem like a good deal. No. There is something called disaffinity. Meaning, the universe want to give you everything, you have to act as the universe. You have to create affinity. I say it about couples lecture, but husband and wife. People say opposite attract, a lie. Similar attract. If you're similar like the creator, there is affinity, it's working. The way we experience the creator, the divine, is good and bad. Punishment and reward. This depends on that. We are using our desire, the opposite of what they meant to be. What was the desire meant to be? To receive all the blessing that the Creator wanted to give me. That was the desire. The desire was built for what? So I can receive all the blessing, all the happiness. But what am I doing with the desire? Say, eh? Desire. Ah, I have a vessel. Now let's swallow all the oceans. Let's swallow all the fish. Let's kill all the people. That's how we use the vessel. It's bad for us. It's not that if I swallow everything, it's bad for the person, the other person. It's bad for you. The one who commit the crime suffer. Don't worry about the person that you did the crime to. If you steal somebody else's wife or husband, they meant to left this relationship. But because you caused that, you're not, you're not causing things, you were involved in it, you are the one who paid the price. If you kill someone, the person is supposed to die exactly at that time. But you, the one who killed them, you take initiative to kill. You are the one who suffer, punishment and reward. There is rules. The Creator cannot do bad to us. Cannot be that the Creator punishes us. Because the Creator can only do good. So, how come there is pain and suffering? I mean, we, we pass in the United States more than 100,000 people die from the Corona. People all over the world, almost 400,000. So, 
How can that be? בעת שאדם מרגיש רע, הנה באותו שיעור שורה עליו כפירה על השגחתו יתברך. When you go through some tough time, the amount of negativity that you feel, and we are falling into it, with the negative thing, that's the amount of uncertainty that's been injected to your brain. I'll give you an example. I don't know how many of you are in love with someone. When you are in love with someone, you become jealous. The person that you love the most, all of a sudden, sitting on the bar and laughing hysterically with another person. They even give a hug to each other. You happen to go to the toilet, to the bathroom. You came back, you see that. If you love them, only if you love them, you get jealous. If you don't love them, I'm not talking about it. Jealousy is only happened to people who are in love. At that moment, you experience what? Pain. You feel you lost your partner. You feel the cheating on you. You feel all kind of thing. The amount of pain that you feel, that amount of uncertainty about the creator that there is. Because if you add enough certainty about the divine, that everything is set only to do good to you, then you will not experience that picture. You will not, maybe you will experience that picture, but you realize, oh, that's her brother. That's his sister. Oh my God, I didn't know you have a sister. All of a sudden you say, yes. Yeah, she's from Kentucky. I told you many times. I said, yes, you say she's Kentucky. I didn't know she's in town. All of a sudden the whole picture changed. But it only changed if you're not experiencing the pain from the divine. That you know the divine will do only good to you. What is the worst punishment of a human being? Having uncertainty about that the divine want to give you everything. That's the worst punishment. So as much as you feel good, you're getting reward. As much as you feel bad, you're getting punishment. You know, there is a, a great book in English called Empty Chair, written by the Rabbi Nachman Mebreslev. The grandson of the grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, if you know who he is. And he writes, when a person say about his life, Oh my God, I have so much pain in my life. God say, that's pain? Let me show you how pain feels like. When a person say, Oh my God, my life is so great. God say, that's great. Let me show how great I can do for you. Whatever you experience, that's what it becomes. Whatever you say, I have a lot of pain, you're right. And whatever you say, I have a lot of great things, you're right. There is a white wall. There is a black dot on the wall, or blue dot if you want. Do you see the blue dot, or do you see the wall? Unfortunately, most of us see the blue dot. We miss the wall. Are you going to be busy all your life with this blue dot, or are you busy with the wall? If you're busy with the wall, the blue dot will disappear. If you're busy with the blue dot, the blue dot will grow. Think about it. Please think about it. כי המתאמץ שלא להתפרץ ממונתו יתברך, אף על פי שטועה ברע בהשגחה, הוא אבר מקן אפוט. הוא אומר, yes, yes, I see her with another guy. I see him with another girl. I see that this person tried to cheat me. I treat this person tried to steal. All of negativity, but you're making an effort and another effort not to see the bad in it, and to see that the divine is still taking care of you. יש לו שכר. You're going to get reward. אם חס ושלום. But if he doesn't have enough effort, he doesn't make enough effort to see the good in it, that the divine still care about you, at that moment you disconnect yourself from the certainty in the divine, and because of that, because of that, things start to go negative worse and worse. Because at that time that you are feeling that negativity, the dark force, which we call it SA, I cannot say the name, allow to remove from you any part of certainty about the divine, that the divine love you. And then the one doubt turning into thousand doubts, thousand doubts turning into 10,000, until you become in a dark, dark, dark corner in the cave. 
And in this point, the person can no longer have enough power to come back. I used to have a student, may she rest in peace, named Elizabeth. She was addicted to heroin. I think I helped her at the time that I could help her for years. I kept her away from the drugs. Anytime she wanted me, I was available. And I asked her, every time she had temptation to use heroin, why? Why you do that? You're smart. You're successful. You're everything. Everything is beautiful. Everything. And she told me, Aliyah, I don't see any positive thing in my life. Even I have it. And when she said when she injected, it's all of a sudden, it's quiet. And everything negative that happened from her childhood till now, it's actually positive. She find a shortcut to feel something incredible. So I was working with her. We did very well. Until a mistake happened. I don't know if I was involved or not. If I was, please forgive me. She met an individual, a friend, that has some money. And I remember when she was very close to me. And she was like living like my own daughter. And uh, I asked that gentleman not to spend money on her at all, to be really cheap because I said she might translate money into a tool for the drugs. Unfortunately, he didn't hear me, didn't listen to me, and things went wrong, went south, and she overdosed, and she died. She passed away. I wasn't there when it happened. You know, she was disconnected from me for 13 months before it happened. I tried to reach out to her, but she was doing well. Money was good, everything was good. And that's when things usually happen bad. Why am I sharing this with you? When you're in a negative spot, negative spot means you have uncertainty about the creator. At that moment, it's very difficult to come back. And the reason I use drugs, because when people use heavy drugs, like heroin, they connect actually to the light. They connect to that feeling of the divine want to give you everything. They connect to that. It's a great feeling. I, ne I never did it, so I don't know. It's a great feeling of the light love you. And you are receiving that love. And you have certainty that the love, uh, light love you. You don't, that the, that the energy love you. You don't have any doubts about it. The problem, the next time you have to do heroin, you have to do more to feel the same feeling, because you didn't earn it. And you do more and you do more until you overdose and then you die. Because the body and the soul frequency cannot match. The, the body cannot handle that amount, so the body has to die. When a person do the work from being 90% negative about the divine, and 90% believe that nobody love him, no human being love him, the divine, nobody love you, if you ever get to that point, at that point, unfortunately, it's just going down. So what you got to do at that time, you have to go against your nature. You have to go against your nature. What we call tshuva me'ahava. For me, it will be to wash dishes with singing and dancing when I don't want to. And I will not enjoy it at the beginning because I have to clean enough dishes until it will become a second nature. The same thing a person is need to do when he's falling into dark places of not believing that the divine love him or her. So the punishment that you're going through, the pain and suffering you're going through, is helping you to go to what we call Gemara Tikkun, the end of the Tikkun, because by you going through the pain and suffering, the pain and suffering is to remove the dark side within me that not allow me to have certainty about the Creator loving me. 
the pain and suffering is cleaning me that I will be able to get to a place that I know with 100% that the divine love me. And by getting to that place, the divine love you, anyhow, anyway, things start to work perfectly. So if you think about all the negativity happening in your life, it's because we don't believe that the divine or people or the universe love you. And then you can use the exact desire how the Creator created it, that now I am receiving because the universe want to give me. So that's how whatever we did wrong purposely turned into positive thing. So now all the wrong thing you did purposely, you stole. Why did you steal? Because you didn't believe. You didn't believe the divine really love you. You didn't believe really the universe love you. And that's why you thought I don't have money because the universe don't love me. So what you did? You stole. That's a sin. That's a crime. And you did it purposely. You didn't do it by mistake. How do you reverse that? You believe whatever you punish for that hundred dollar you stole. Punish means you become more uncertain about the divine. And now you do the good thing even when you don't feel. You do the good things even if you're not in the mood. You give charity when you're not in the mood. You give food when you're not in the mood. You forgive your brother even if you don't like them. Yes. And when you do it with love and excitement, then your vessel is reversed to now receive all that fulfillment. That will happen in the end of time. Either in the 6,000, hopefully soon. All this energy in a small level what we call Gemara Tikkun, is revealed when? On Thursday night. Why are we doing it at night? Night represents the negativity that we need to clean. Day represents the fulfillment we're going to get. Yom ve Laila. Laila, night, is where in my life I don't have enough certainty. Where in my life I need to clean? Where? Where in my life I don't believe people love me? Where in my life I don't believe the divine care about me? That's night. I stay in, at night. I read those 24 books. I put crown on my head. You know what you put crown on your head? You won. You're on the dream team of spirituality. You won. You won what? You won the concept of understanding that I know the divine now love me. So what are you doing in the daytime? You celebrate the achievement. In the daytime, what we call Zeran Pin and Malchut, the male and female aspect of the universe are meeting. Exactly when? Sunrise. They meet each other. And whoever stay all night is about to meet that energy. Some people ask me, can I do just night? Can I do just day? How can I answer them? How can I answer? I can tell you what I do. I do night and day. You don't want to be a part of it? Good. Do a part. Do a part. It's all good. But you need to start to understand what does desire look like? If you feel you're rich but you're not happy, do something. If you feel you're happy but you're not rich, do something. If you feel you're not happy and you're not rich, <laughs> please. Show up on Thursday night and, and make it different. Remember, this Thursday night till Friday morning, it's not a regular night. Is it for men and women and the same for everybody? My kids, since they were young, was doing it. It doesn't matter. Effort is effort. You want a good life? Make an effort. I hope you come here to support us, to be with us, to join us. And we will do whatever we can to serve you. I know Debbie is working on making a small cheesecake for you. So you can have it for the morning. Hopefully we can have it. I know it's quarantine, so it's different. We're going to do it from our balcony here. And we're going to give you some chairs to sit outside. We do the best we can to do whatever we can for you to, to be part of us. Because we care about you. You are family. You are our tribe. And this tribe called the Dream Tribe going to make a difference this year. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that I wasn't too complicated. Again, this lecture is supposed to take 18 hours. I think I did it in 67 minutes or so. 
Thank you so much for being with us. Happy holiday. Chag Sameach.